Creality was nice enough to send over one of their Sonic pads for me to check out. So in this video, I'll be setting it up on the Ender 5 S1, along with designing a custom mount for it. And I'll also be putting it up against its direct competition, the Bamboo Lab P1P. And to sum up the Sonic pad, it's basically an external control unit that allows you to run the Clipper firmware. This will basically make it so your printer can print faster. Inside the box itself, everything is nicely packed, and it comes with a sheet of stickers, which I will absolutely never use. But underneath that is the actual Sonic pad itself, which is basically just a tablet that can control everything, and there's a lot of ports for you to plug into. And from what I've seen, if you utilize all four USB ports on this, you can run up to four different machines from one pad. And it does have two kickstand feet that will hold it up, so you don't have to mount it to anything, and you can just set it on your table if you like. And here's everything else out of the box that you're going to need for this. But before I get this set up with the printer, I'm going to print a Benchy using the stock firmware. And then I'll print using the same G-code on the Sonic pad and see if there's any difference. And that took an hour and nine minutes to finish, and the Benchy looks pretty decent. And to get the pad itself working, I just need to plug in power and a USB cable. You're also going to need a USB to SD card adapter, so you can flash the new firmware on here. And with that done, there's a button on the side to turn it on. And then the pad is going to boot up and instruct you to set up the Wi-Fi and your region, along with having to download and install all the updates for this thing, which I cut out of the video because it's extremely boring. So with all of that done, it'll instruct you to name your Sonic pad, and then you'll be able to pick what Creality printer you want to use it with. And these are all pre-set up profiles for these printers, so they should just work. That being said, you're not limited to just using this with Creality printers. It's just going to take a bit more work and setup to get it working on something else. So if you are looking to do that, I highly suggest checking out the Feral Engineer, seeing that he has a full detailed video on this, which I'll link in the description below, and he also has a bunch of videos on Clipper in general. But anyways, with my printer selected, I'm going to flash the firmware onto my SD card. And with that done, all I need to do is remove this and make sure my printer's off, plug this in, and turn it on. And this only takes a few seconds, and you'll notice that the screen no longer works on the printer. And back at the Sonic Pad, it wants me to connect to the printer using the USB cable. And this did fail to connect a couple times due to it being plugged in the wrong USB port. But after changing that, it worked right away. After everything's connected, it's going to want to test all your fans, make sure everything's working properly, and you're going to have to re-level this and reset your Z-offset. And it looks like my auto-leveling came out pretty good with no crazy high or low spots. And with that, everything is all set up and ready to go now. So now all of your controls for this printer are done on the Sonic Pad. So I'm just going to preheat it, and just to make things simple, I'm going to plug this into the Sonic Pad so I can print from it. And this SD card still has the G-code on it for the Benchy that I wanted to print. And if I click on it, it says it's going to take an hour and 15 minutes to print. So let's get that started and see how long it actually takes. And looking at it, it is moving around and printing a bit faster than it was before. And with it all done, it looks almost exactly the same as the one printed on the stock firmware. Which is nice and all, but let's see how long it actually took. So in the Sonic screen, if you go to print, and then print history, it will tell you exactly how long. And as you can see, it took 48 minutes in total. And you can see that I actually printed it twice. And this is due to the first one failing due to my Z offset not being tight enough to the bed. So make sure you definitely dial in your Z offset to make sure stuff is going to stick to your bed. But with that said, just using the Sonic pad to print this, I saved 21 minutes on the same print, which is pretty good with just plugging something in and pretty much just telling it to go. And like I said at the beginning of this video, I designed a mounting system for this so you can actually mount the Sonic Pad to the machine. So why not use the machine and the Sonic Pad to print it out? And here's the first of four main pieces. And it looks like it came out pretty good, and I designed all of these to print with zero supports. So when it comes to the second piece that I printed, I wanted to see if I could mess with the settings and get it to print faster. Which I did, but the print quality suffered, and more or less it looks like it can't keep up with cooling at these speeds. But with this being a functional part, this is completely usable still. And I'm just going to put it back to the default settings and see how it does for a second one of these. And from the looks of it, it came out a lot better than the first one as you can see with them side by side. And if we look at the print times of both of them, it's about a 34 minute difference. So here's all the main mount parts laid out, and I'm going to need to use two M3 4x5mm inserts, and I'm going to heat set these into place using a soldering iron and a brass tip. On the Sonic Pad itself, you need to remove both of the kickstand feet, that way you can get to both of the threaded mounting points on either side. And I'm going to be using two M3 by 12 millimeter bolts on either side to attach these brackets. And if you're looking for any of the 3D files, tools, materials, or machines, I'll have links to everything in the description below. But anyways, to actually mount this to the machine, you need to remove these two M5 bolts on either side, and you're going to have to replace these with M5 by 35 millimeter bolts, because sadly the ones that were already on here are just too short. And then all you need to do is attach the swing arms with one bolt on either side. And you're going to want to make sure both of these are pretty snug, and that's why I put threaded inserts in here so you're not going to risk stripping it out. And try to pay attention to how you're mounting the screen, and don't do what I did and mount it upside down. So with my screen problem fixed, I just need to plug in the USB port in the back, running it through the opening in the swing arm, and do the same thing with the power on the other side. Also prior to doing this, I printed a about 12 of these little clips to organize the wires. 
and you can clip them into these top holes and down the railing on the side. And you can print as many of these as you want, but I think six on either side is enough. So there we go, everything's all installed, I think it looks pretty good, and it's nice to have a large screen on the front of this with adjustable viewing angles. So with all that done, let's see how it actually does against the Bamboo Lab P1P. And if for some reason you're not aware of this printer already, this is a very fast 3D printer, and I haven't sped up the footage at all. And for this first test, I'm just printing a 20mm calibration cube on both printers, and just seeing how quickly they can do them. And these are by no means a difficult print, so they should be done pretty quick. And here are both of the cubes done. So the P1P took 11 minutes to print this, and the Ender 5S1 took 14 minutes. And either way, that's still pretty fast for both of these. And definitely not that much time between the two either. That being said, neither one of them is perfect. The one on the P1P has very rounded corners, and the Ender 5 has some ringing around the letters. But these are very small prints, and it didn't really allow the machines to get to their full speed. So I'm going to try to print something a bit bigger. And the slicer for the P1P is quoting about five and a half hours, which this is usually pretty spot on. And the slicer for the Ender 5S1 is quoting 16 and a half hours which is definitely wrong. On both printers, I'm going to be using this matte PLA from Bamboo Lab, and to make sure that they're both as stable as possible, I'm putting them on a concrete floor. So the P1P has been printing for a few hours, and everything looks like it's doing fine, and you can see how quick it's moving around. And my dog is even checking it out for some reason, with 42 minutes left on it. And the Ender 5 is making some good progress, and this is a little over 4 hours into it. And it obviously has a lot more time left on it, so I'm going to check on it in the morning. So here we are the next day, and both of them are all done. That being said, the one on the Ender 5 looks a bit different, seeing that it has solid blocks on the inside instead of compartments. So I check the file in the slicer again, and there's a warning at the bottom. And once I slice it and put it into the preview mode, you can see how everything changes. So I decided to weigh both of the models to see if they had similar weights at least, and they're almost exactly the same. So for this not so scientific experiment, I'm just going to keep going, because this is good enough for me. So the overall print time for the Ender 5 was 10 hours and 47 minutes, which is almost 6 hours faster than it should have been. And both of the boxes overall look great and feel extremely sturdy in the hand. But with that said, the P1P was still able to print this in about half the time as the Ender 5 S1 with the Sonic Pad. And if we break down the total price difference between the two, it's about $230 more for the Bamboo Lab P1P. And if you already have a Creality printer, you can just buy the Sonic Pad on its own for about $160 and have things up and running in about 30 minutes. This also has the added benefit of being able to control everything using your computer or mobile device over Wi-Fi. And that includes sending files over to print over Wi-Fi and being able to view things using a webcam. And this is by no means a in-depth review, and of course I could have spent a lot more time fine-tuning all my settings and probably got faster prints. I more or less wanted to just show the overall benefits you get of just a plug-and-play system like this. There is a small quality problem with this pad though, the screen scratches extremely easy. Just from my fingers touching it for setup, I have scratches all over the screen already. So a screen protector for this is going to be an absolute must. So let me know in the comments what you think of this setup, and which printer you'd rather get. Well that's about it, so thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!